Good morning. Hi, everyone. This is my last Rainbow Boss coffee. There we go. I'm sad about that. It is a sad day indeed. <laughs> Great timing for you in the song. Yeah, didn't try to do that. Did I have fun playing Dark Chronicle? I did. I had a great time playing Dark Chronicle last night. <laughs> Brandon says, good news, they have not stopped making them. But they're so expensive. Do you know how much cheaper they are in Japan? They're so much cheaper. They're ridiculously cheap. Every consumable is so cheap it's dangerous. And I quote Brandon, these are the same price. Anyway, I'm getting the bigger one. Can I get them shipped in cheaper maybe? Uh, not necessarily because the liquid weight is heavier. Kepler is in a mood this morning. Where's Grandpa? Grandpa is visiting his parents. He gets home today, but not early enough for breakfast stream. He would have had to have left very early for that. Kepo, you had scoop? You want a lap, that's what you want. We just don't know that's what we want. Come here. We spun in a circle and sat back down. Okay. Yeah, he's being a stinker. He didn't wake me up. I don't know. When Steven's gone, um, he doesn't wake me up. And when I'm gone, he doesn't wake Steven up. I don't know what it is. But um, I got up this morning and I got out of bed and he came out from under the bed. Hi. Kepler. That's, that's mine. You can't have coffee. Come here. Come here. I'll get you. Is that what you want? No, don't stand on the PlayStation 4. Come here. Ugh. This is what you want. I know this is what you want. This is what you want. This is exactly it. Yeah, now we're purring. Now we're happy. Things are right again. Can we calm down, please? Uh-huh. We're happy. Okay. And we're purring. Hi, good morning. Yeah. Okay, I think we're good now. We are incredibly happy. We have 300 bits from Satsy who says, looking forward to catching the VOD later, had to do a phone banking yesterday, which should be quick and easy. Instead, it froze my account, so I, uh, I'm off to get that sorted. Vibes for all clown. Hope that gets sorted and it's easy. Um, we opened a bank account a year and a half ago and I swear it was cursed. It was probably the most fun I had at the bank though. Cause the banker was like, let me know you come in next time. I'm going to light some sage. Uh, we have a 40 month resub from The Relude. Uh, 48 months from Gamer Girl Life. You leveled up and got another number. Satisfy your mint tooth with tiny Eddie's cucumber fluid. See, I don't like mint. Like, toothpaste has to be mint. Like that. That's fine. We'll not accept anything else. 
Um, every so often I want a York peppermint patty. That's it. Nothing else mint ever. I don't like mint in drinks, mint flavored anything else. No. <laughs> so, um, I guess cucumber fluid would help. <laughs> cucumber water. Hi. You're just really, really happy, Keppo. We have, um, uh, 1050 bits from Anise who says, Hi, Eddie. Uh, do you, Mal, or Mama George have a good recipe for cooking greens? Like spinach? Like that kind of greens? Um, I would just saute with some garlic and salt and pepper. Actually, I have radishes, and I'm worried that it's already too hot for the radishes, so I'm thinking of sautéing the, the greens. Collards? Um... I've only made collard greens once, and I can't think of what I did. I just searched, like, southern collard green recipe, and then I did that. But I'm not a big fan of collard greens. So, I'm not... Haley said, we are the collard greenhouse. Yeah, Haley makes them more, and they like them better. Greens, onion, bacon. Yeah, I believe that's the very traditional southern recipe. Haley said, once I learned about the vinegar sugar thing, they got better. Um... We have a 58 month resub from Paper Spyro, nine months from Super Yoshi 7. Sing into a flavor immorality with Tiny Eddie's floral syrup splatters. It's a thousand bits from Gold Lightning who says, Eddie, what cake should I make next? Floral syrup splatters. So you know how people like take flowers and I think they candy them. Maybe you could put candied flowers on the cake with some sort of syrup. We have itchy ear. I almost made cherry crisp last night. I might make some tonight. A lavender syrup cake, and he says, that would be good. Hibiscus syrup? There's a lot of options for that. Thank you, um, Gold Lightning. Uh, we have 38 month resub from Genesis. 65 months from I Spy Moose. 68 from Skit Scott. The scrumptiousness is in the onion ring. Tiny Eddie's Opaline Anteater Rolls. I mean, onion rings are great. Uh, we have a thousand bits from Jace Book who says, Good morning, Eddie. Can we get a snack to celebrate the last breakfast stream before Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door is released onto the Switch? Opaline Anteater Rolls. So, like, opals? Like the stone? But there's an onion ring for some reason. <laughs> Thank you, Jacebook. We have a 43 month resub from Kalk9, 23 months from Dtran, uh, 56 from Melzy D. We have a 61 month resub from Spinach Wrap at tier 3 for Subby. And Spinach Wrap used my emote. Thank you. Subby seemed quieter today. It was not as startling. So, um, that was nice <laughs> to not be so startled. We have a 47 month resub from Akira Dre. 300 bits from Aldo who says, I saw an article about this and now I need more input. Who would win one-on-one -on -one in, a, in a game of basketball, LeBron James or Mewtwo? I'm gonna say Mewtwo, because he kind of floats. And you could say that's cheating, but that's just how Mewtwo is, so... <laughs> Quieter, because Cryptid isn't present. Chaz is so kind to me. I really appreciate him. This cat is so happy. You guys have no idea. He just keeps, like, throwing his head up against my stomach. Like, like a head nudge to my belly. Make Chaz Cherry Crisp. Chaz, do you want Cherry Crisp? I could make some tonight and then I'll portion it out and people can come get it.
Beyonce want pie. I know she'd like it. <laughs> Anise gifted a sub to Grugs Pro, uh, 32 month resub uh, from Private Butter for Christ. Uh, 43 month resub from Tiger Tiger. 10 months from uh, Lu Luca Tuarka. Uh, 40 months from Pickletron. 66 from Sapphire Becca. Gamers007 gifted a sub to Trademark13. Thank you for the gift sub. You can hear him purring. Hi. Oh, we're such a happy cat. Are we going to monopolize my arm so I can't use it to click alerts? He does like his belly pet. Oh, we are so happy. We have a 41 month resub from King Calamari, uh, 19 months from Cat Lizard, 39 months from the Slick Duke, and 19 months from Little Miss Music. Thank you all. Happy Cat, can I get my coffee? And then we can continue. There we go. It's coffee. You don't like. We know we don't like, but we do not trust. That was special technique. Lean over the cat. But we can't startle cat because then cat leaves and then cat causes problems. He's right behind chat, so you can't even see his little face. <laughs> Gotta learn to adapt around cat. Well, that's how it is. You have to cat-proof things in your house. And as you learn your cat, you learn um, what things need cat-proofed. We cannot leave out plastic because it gets eaten. Um, we can't leave out string because it gets eaten. Um, and sometimes you learn things the hard way, like cat eat string needs to go to the emergency vet. That has not happened with our boys, but um, it can be concerning. Sometimes you learn that your cat just eats paper. Like you, you like to chew cardboard. And if we leave a box sitting around long enough, it looks like we have mice because he just keeps chewing it. Sometimes you find your cat destroys the toilet paper roll, so you have to, like, switch the toilet paper roll to the other way so that when they bat at it, it doesn't unroll the whole thing. Anise says, my lesson was a foam bath toy. Did that get chewed up? <laughs> Brandon says, last week we opened a box at Chaz and Jeff's. The cats were like, wake up, babe, new tape plastic just dropped. Their cats are very into plastic. Like, I thought Kepler was, but their cats will, like, hunt down plastic and immediately go after it. Like, there's no waiting until the human might not be looking. It's immediately go for the plastic. Kepler kind of waits a little bit. Some cats, Elspeth would sit and chew on a grocery bag until the end of time. <laughs> Some cats are very into getting on the counter. Some are very into knocking things over. We have a 58 month resub from Trecanthia. Thank you. Kepler's pretty good. He really only bothers things if he wants something, which is what he wanted this morning. He just didn't know how to get what he wanted this morning, so he was going to cause trouble until he got what he wanted. And now we have what we want, and we are fine and happy, and things are great in Kepler's world. It's just about solving the problems for them. Chess says, old age keeps Elspeth out of the knives these days. Yeah. 
I think it keeps Kepler out of some things too. Like, I feel like once cats get to be about six years old, they mellow out. But then once they get to be about... How old are you, Kepler? Your birthday's like in three days. How old do you turn? Eleven? Twelve. Kepler turns twelve on Friday. And like, once they get to this age, it's like basically sleep all the time. How many beans old are you? Are you 12 beans? We are just purring away and asleep and not even responding to any anyone talking to him. Can't be. Can't fall. Oh, our ear moved a little bit. I opened. Elspeth and Vincer are 15, Chow said. Okay. We got special treats for Kepi's birthday. Under the recommendation of Lunar Pearl, who was like, my cats are obsessed with these. So we'll see if he likes them. If not, they may become um, treats for Chaz's cats. <laughs> we do have a backup, though. We have a 67 month resub from Renee. Thank you, Renee. Who says, I can confirm Tristan was 21 and was just sleep all the time. Kitty's like 14, 15. Keller's gonna be 64 in human years. Yeah, we're gonna be a good boy. We get special treats. I wasn't sure exactly if I should get him anything else. I didn't know what he would use, because sometimes it's hard. Lately, he has not been in that little bed I bought for the sunroom. The one that's like the scoop. I cleaned it out, and he still doesn't want to go in it, so. I don't know. Maybe we're done with that for a while. Sometimes that happens. Is Friday Zelda or Kepi stream? Friday will be Zelda. Renee says, I can't believe my babies will be turning two in the fall. I love them so much. Yeah, they're... I can't believe that they're not kittens anymore, because I just picture kittens when you talk about them. MCL Blue says, so wait, Josh... Wasn't Josh coming over? Uh, Josh was going to come over, but that didn't happen. So, that's fine. And Steven is still visiting his parents. I'm not sure when he's planning on leaving. So, I'm gonna do breakfast stream. I'll do this now. I'm doing breakfast stream. And then at one, I'm going to do painting stream and I'm going to paint one of the drawings I did in college that I was showing off last painting stream, which was what, Friday morning? And I'm gonna do a little probably eight by 10 on that. So we'll do that. And then tomorrow, Steven will do Metroid because Steven will be back for that. And if you missed it last night, I played Dark Cloud 2 on my channel. And at some point, Steven will have the VOD up for that. And he says, is the Sumi A painting done? Yes, it is. I need to do Redbubble and eBay shots for that. And then those will be up. <laughs> I'm glad people like Dark Cloud 2. It's like just enough ridiculous tropes, but um, it's fun. <laughs> Brandon says, it pretty. Yeah, uh, Brandon saw the Sumie painting the other day. So it turned out well. I'm happy about the painting. <laughs> and he says, so many cutscenes. Yeah, there's portions of the game that have a lot of cutscene. The beginning, at some point there's a big plot thing and that happens and there's a lot of cutscene there. And then the ending, of course, is going to have a lot of cutscene. Uh, 
Shane says the dungeon delving seemed like it would get old, especially with you saying later ones are like 30 floors. Um, like the bonus chapter after the final boss is... I think that is the longest one and I believe it's 25. I can't reach the guide right now because Kepler will be upset. <laughs> But each subsequent chapter's dungeon is longer and longer and longer. And like, the first one we did, they all looked kind of the same. But as it goes on, they change a little bit. Like the, the one that happens in the beach town, like some of that looks different. Moose says, Cat and Lap can never move again. This is your life now. Yeah, this is life now. I will stay here. We are definitely in a good mood now. Trademark says, regarding Dark Cloud, you have to enjoy that type of dungeon mechanic. It's not for everyone. Yeah, I mean, it's a good, like chill thing to just go through the dungeon mechanic, to go through each floor and later on you can fish in some of them, like after you get all the monsters defeated, you can work on grinding things because like you have to grind for materials. So like the game is very long. There's a lot to it. We have a 68 month resub from Chrissy G. Thank you. But we're just getting into the town building area. So like, um, I probably will play more. Like I said yesterday, I'm not guaranteeing that I'll finish it because it is such a long game. Um, but we're just gonna start doing the town building in the next chapter in chapter two. So you get to see kind of like the main thing of Dark Cloud with the time travel. So that's fun. Is weapon durability ever a problem late game? I don't remember it being a problem, but in Dark Cloud 1, when you break your weapons, they're gone forever. And in Dark Cloud 2, you just have to fix them. Maybe play earlier sometime so I can watch too? I mean, that's not out of the realm of possibilities. He just says you can keep auto repair in the quick slots. Yeah, that's what I normally do. I normally keep the camera so it's there and then I keep bread or something and then I keep probably right hand weapon because I tend to use that most often. How long did it take me to finish Dark Cloud 2 the first time I played it if I remember? Um, that's a good question that I don't have the answer to completely because um, My parents were divorced when it came out. It came out when I was in high school? Yes. And um, the PlayStation 2 was at my dad's house. So I only really got to play it then and I don't remember what my playtime was. And then I didn't get to the final chapter then, like the after the boss chapter, chapter eight. But then I played it again in college, and I got there, and finished the game completely. Look at these little toe beans. Can we stretch our hand up a little bit more? Stretch the hand up. Look at these toe beans. No, we're not happy about that. We have a 63 month resub from Ways and Aeon, thank you! Look, <laughs> run beans. But they're so far away! And I have Kepler. Kepler. Thank you, Chess. Chess is roll. You're welcome. Thank you to our Patreon supporters over on patreon.com slash uh, Steven's Patreon. <laughs> I don't remember exactly what he has it called. Uh, the mods have the links if you're interested in that. So you can check those out. 
<laughs> Steven something, Steven. Oh, is it Steven George? Thank you, Fossix. I can't remember everything. It's 9.30 in the morning. We have 300 bits from MTappet who says, I request good vibes as I will be going to the doctor today to see if I have any metabolic issues such as hyperthyroidism or diabetes. Good vibes. It would be great if it was nothing, but at least getting answers is helpful so you can work on making sure things are taken care of. It's not 8 p.m. Animal Crossing. It's 9.30. Uh, what else is going on? Um, let's see, I've been in the garden while Steven's gone because um, I'm dealing with aphids and thrips, which are tiny little biting bugs all over everything that are destroying everything. So I used... Um, forgot the name of it. I used a sort of pesticide on it and um, it seems to have taken care of all the thrips. I saw two yesterday so I may need to try something s again. Like a different thing. <laughs> need ladybugs? Yeah, but ladybugs fly away. Like, they'll get some things. So, I haven't seen any aphids since I sprayed. Yeah, I've been using um, herbicide soap. Here, King Lucina says, I've got a couple of tomato hornworms trying to set up camp. And you have ducks? Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, ducks will destroy all that. Um, I have not had hornworms yet. I think it's a little too early for me to have horn hornworms. You need ladybug nymphs? Those things devour aphids? I'll look into that next time I have aphids, but right now they are all gone. I just have a couple of thrips, I see. They were destroying the melons. Like, I saw the melons get yellow and I went out and looked and I'm like, mm. But, um, let's see, that arched trellis, the, um, the peas are hitting like the second and third tier of that, which is really cool. They're like starting to vine up it and that's neat. The beans are going slow. The tomatoes are all hitting the second rung except the purple tomato that I planted because that thing's only like this tall. Um, I was going to pluck a radish yesterday to see if it was ready, the biggest one. Because I can see like its shoulders in the dirt and I think it's ready to get plucked and eaten. And the corn is pretty tall. It's starting to look like corn, or at least very large grass. We have a 22 month resub from Hero King Lucina. Thank you. The radish is ready to be plucked like in Super Mario Bros 2. You can eat the greens. I thought about it. I think I planted the radish and the peas too late in the season, but I couldn't plant them any earlier because we were in Japan. Giving Chaz a little taste of home with the corn. That was what I said. I was like, Chaz, it's like home. He's like, why would you grow corn? It's everywhere. And I was like, not down here. <laughs> Recreate the Midwest in Raleigh. Driving around Raleigh feels like northern Wisconsin with how many trees there are. Like, if you're in some of, like, the outer areas of Raleigh and you drive around, like, through the streets, it feels like northern Wisconsin. Like, when I would go visit my grandparents. <laughs> Brandon said, I can't say I've ever been homesick for cornfields. You grew up in the Midwest-ish. Sort of. I had a cornfield behind my house for most of my life. Fossick says, it feels like they carved a road in Hyrule in Raleigh. Brandon says, we had corn behind my house at some point. 
Okay. We had soybeans behind mine. One year they did soybeans. One year they did wheat and that was really cool. Especially when it turned yellow. That was really fun. Cause it just was really pretty. But most of the time it was corn. One of the things I found interesting is driving through the different Midwestern states and seeing how they handle the sides of the fields. So like, driving through Indiana, I felt like all the cornfields had more trees and stuff around them. And then Wisconsin, it felt more like weeds, <laughs> like prairie grasses and whatever. There was just something about like the difference between like road, blank space, field, and like what was between those. I don't know. There was, it just, it's something that struck me and now I can't remember exactly what it was. Okay, kitty cat, I'm done with this can. Can I set it over there? Oh, we don't like that. Sorry. Henchman says Wisconsin doesn't require uh, as big of wind breaks as areas like Ohio. That makes sense. I think Wisconsin has more tornado chances, but that wouldn't, nothing would stop that. <laughs> We have a 61 month resub from Shydiz. Thank you. I Spy Moose says, when my mom was a kid, she lived on an apple orchard. She would tell me about the time she and my uncle would just hang out in the trees, climbing, eating apples. That sounds great. I had an uncle with apple trees and I think plum was the other thing he had. And I remember hanging out back there behind his house. Haley said, Wisconsin doesn't need to break wind as much as Ohio. Is that because of the cheese? Spin a trap says, my dad and I would drive around filling random pear or finding random pear trees and filling buckets with illicit pears. See, my dad would do that in Wisconsin with apples. He would go scout out apple trees and um, go pick apples. And he would like try and get them early in the season because he likes them smaller and like super sour. So we'd be like, oh, we need to go scout out some apple trees. And there was one I remember that was near a farmhouse and then the farmhouse got sold for development and they tore the farmhouse down, but then they never developed anything. So the apple tree just sat there. So that was one we definitely went to a few times. Illicit pear sounds like a tiny Eddie. Yeah, it does. We are happy cat. It's bath time. We woke up from our little nap. Kepler's been good when Steven's been gone. We're getting everything we could want, ever. We've taken our pills well, for the most part. Action Cat says, we used to pick cherries from a neighbor and made cherry cake a lot uh, for a lot of my childhood till new neighbors moved in. Uh, what did Haley say? Haley says, when are we gonna stream Stardew? I don't know, Haley. I'm so burnt out on it. It's so much. Uh, Anissa's house Kepo doing? Um, as good as we could hope for. We did have an episode of vomiting the other day, and it's hard to know exactly at what point do we call the vet and ask about it. Because, like, he hasn't thrown up in a few days. So it's like, well, it's been like four or five days since he last threw up. I don't know. It's hard to know at what point do we need to change meds. 
But right now we are doing fine. Thank you for kicking me. We have 300 bits from Kit Khalid who says, Good morning. I wanted to ask if you've dealt with powdery mildew. It killed my squash last year. We had so much rain last week. Everything I says, say, everything I see says to dilute baking soda um, and add to Dawn. Um, I have not dealt with that, but that does sound like a decent thing to try. What is... I'm trying to think of what you should do for that. There are some things I'll try home recipes for, depending on what it is, and there are some things I'm like, I'm just gonna go grab this pesticide. I'm not dealing with this, this bug. So, I mean, it's definitely worth trying. Shai says, whenever my mom used to spot wild grape leaves growing on the side of the road, she would uh, pull over and pick them. We used to make, uh, I forgot how to pronounce that. Dolmades, the classic Greek dish. Those were such good things to eat when we were in Greece. I loved those. We have a lot of wild grape here. Most of it is muscadine scuppernogs. <clears throat> when you see them growing around here. But it's more common to see kudzu, which is invasive. And we have not too far away. It really took over a field. Like near here that I saw. It was just kind of growing wild, the kudzu vine. Here King Lucina says, uh, Muscadine Scuppernogs make great wine. Yeah, everything local wine-wise is made of that. And there are a handful of local wineries. Um, I was looking for a bottle of it, the, the Duplin Carlos wine. I was looking for another bottle of that the other day and I couldn't find it. They had everything but that, that wine. And Duplin is a county east of here that makes wine. Carlos is their, um, their driest wine that Duplin has. And everything else they have is ultra sweet. So if people like wine, they tend to like the Carlos out of all the stuff they have. But yeah, Duplin's local. There's a few other smaller local ones. We saw a bunch of them at the state fair because they were showing off the different wines they had. And he's pointed out the scores are tied. These ones, coffee and tea. I didn't think it'd catch up. I haven't like thought about what the numbers actually said in a while though. There's an art in the queue. Let's look at the art in the queue. Good morning. Oh, you slept there, Steven? <laughs> okay. He's there with Dan. Yeah, I know you slept on the couch. Yeah, Dan is there and Dan has the bed. Good morning, Steven. Kepler was being a pain until he got in my lap and now he is no longer being a pain. Like trying to stand on the PS4 and eat all of the things in this room. Why is Steven away? To see his parents. It's been a bit since we went. And we both cannot leave at the same time right now because of Kepler's meds. We have a 44 month resub from Gemini104. Thank you. Yeah, Kepler is on um, nine pills a day. He gets five different pills in the morning, four pills at night. How long is Steven staying there? He'll be back later today. Sandwich Fam says nine? Yeah. Um, we are on two heart medicines, a blood thinner, 
uh, ferrosamide, which is a diuretic. Um, we are on an anti-nausea inflammation pill. B12 supplement. I think that's it. Some of them he gets twice a day. Thus the nine. But we've gotten real good at taking our meds. We still don't like it. Steven says, we were last in Myrtle Beach for Christmas, so it's been five months. I'll be back for Super Metroid tomorrow at 1, but I think Mal is streaming today at 1. Yeah, I'm going to stream at 1 today. I'm going to do like a little 8x10 painting of um, a drawing I did in college. Chrysalium says, giving him pills gotten any easier since he has so many. So what we do is we buy empty pill caps and um, put three of his pills in there because they fit. And then the Pimo Bendin doesn't fit. So we put the three pills in the little capsule and then we have the Pimo Bendin. So we have two that we pill him instead of four at once. Three are in one. It makes it easier, and one of his meds is, like, really, really bad taste, they said. They were like, no pet ever eats this willingly, it's terrible. They were like, so put it in the capsule, because then it's hidden behind that, taste-wise. So, th the fact that it doesn't taste bad anymore, I think, is slightly helpful. We hate it slightly less to get pills. One of the things I've been doing is I prepare wet food for him and he gets his pills when he gets his wet food in the morning. And so I'll set the wet food down until he comes over to eat it and I let him eat a little bit of it so like he has that liquid in his mouth. Cause like with a human you put in the pill and you use water to help swallow it but like that doesn't happen with him. I can't tell him to take a drink as he gets the pill. So like I'll at least let him eat a bite or two. And then I'll take the pill and I'll just scoop it into the wet food and then pill him. So it goes down, I think, a little smoother. And that's been helping. And then we just go back to eating when we're done. He still doesn't love it. Steven says he definitely takes pills easier if he's in the middle of eating. Yeah, he doesn't want to be pilled, but he doesn't fight us. But the boy does love to drink water. Every chance he gets, he's like, sink drink, please turn on the sink. I cannot turn on sink. I think we could teach you to turn on the sink, Capo. Right? Are we still dyed purple? Yeah. When they took blood from him at the ER vet, they wrapped his leg in the bandage. And it was purple, so he has purple on his leg. Clefairy Rock says, It's good Kep likes to drink. Many cats don't drink enough. It is a common cat problem to not drink enough water. That has never been Kepler's problem. In fact, um, when he was a kitten, we asked the vet multiple times if um, there was a problem with him because he just drank a ton of water all the time and we still do that which is good because flushing out those kidneys with all those meds is useful we have a 43 month resub from the tacos are here thank you and dream says yeah that's why i don't put pink red or purple on white fur it stains his other leg is like yellow green from the same reason and when we took him to his normal vet, his normal vet was like, ah, they didn't think about having white fur. And they just used whatever. He's like, I pay attention to that when I do that with cats who have white fur. And I was like, well, he's not like going into any cat shows anytime soon. So I think he's fine. He just has a little bit of color on him. Instead of being just black and white. 
And Dream says, oh dang, I guess green too? Maybe different brands. Maybe, I'm not sure what they put on him. But yeah, one leg is pink and one leg is green right now. <laughs> when I said that about not entering any cat shows, the vet was like, don't count him out yet. I was like, <laughs> There was one time I had said something about Kepler not figuring out how to do some things, and he covered Kep's ears and was like, shh. The people at our vet really like him. He had a checkup a few weeks ago and the vet tech just, you could see it in her face. Like she was like, I love this cat. Just like the way she was looking at Kepler. And I was like, oh, I'm so glad they love our boy. I had told her, I was like, he can do tricks cause she was trying to distract him with treats. And so she grabbed some of the temptations and I said, you know, if you hold your hand up, he'll tap it. And so she did and he, he tapped her hand and she was just like, oh my God. It was really great. It was one of my favorite vet moments. And they have a, a clinic cat that walks around. She's just like this really pretty tortoiseshell. He's a natural charmer. Yeah, he's doing better at the vet. I'm sure people experience this with their cats or other, or if they bring their dog in sometimes, like they just aren't the same at the vet. And Dream says, we get love at first sight with some patients. Yeah, I kind of figured that's what happened with that vet tech. She just fell in love with Kepler. And Dream says, I fell in love with an Italian Greyhound yesterday. I would die for her. That's kind of how I felt uh, like when I met uh, Jules's dog. I was like, she can have everything she wants from me. She's so cute. Hey, bud. What was I saying? I forgot. Yuna. Yeah, I met Yuna. I haven't met Marnie. Are we good now? We had a good bath? Nope, we're not done bathing. When Steven t took Kepler to the ER vet, um, one of the vet techs there loved him too. And like when Steven went to pick up Kepler, they were like, Hey, she wants to talk to you. And she called Steven into a room and was like, I'm just really happy to see that he's going home. She's like, I was here when you brought him in. So that was also very nice. Oh, I was saying that they don't act the same at the vet. That was it. Um, and because Kepler has been in so much lately, like he's starting to get more comfortable and not just 100% terrified at the vet um, to the point of where he's being a little bit more personable. Like he was able to do the trick for the vet tech. And at his last, last appointment that he just had, um, he got into the people chairs where the, where like Steven and I would sit and he jumped up in there and just laid down and laid there and was very sweet instead of like trying to hide or get back in the carrier. He was just able to kind of sit there and relax a little bit so they could kind of see that he's... that his breathing was calming down because he wasn't on the table. And like they have these like climbing things in each clinic room, which is great I'm sure if you bring in kittens, but um, <laughs> he's definitely not going to go play on that. <laughs> Ruru Drake's is exposure therapy actually, yeah. It seems like he was in like once a week for like an entire month and a half. Like that's kind of how it felt between the ER vet, the regular vet, the cardiology vet. Going in just for blood work, going in for blood work a second time. So we're doing better at the vet, which is great. We have a 67 uh, month resub from Brandon. Thank you, Brandon, with the Thomas emote. Oh, we're done? Okay, bye. I am just covered in cat hair. Thank you, buddy. All right. 
Are we leaving now? We had our bath time. We got everything we needed this morning. Sink drink, scoop, bath time. <laughs> now I'm free? Yeah, it's nice to be able to move my legs. I can stretch. I can grab the Dark Cloud 2 player's guide and answer that question from earlier. How long is the dungeon in chapter eight? What, is this a misprint? So it has each floor and they're numbered, right? <laughs> On the last page, it says 27. 21, 21, 21, 21. <laughs> Are you gonna make me count on the map? Oh God, that's too hard. This map is too small. You repeat the level a bunch of times. Is that minutes or hours? Well, it's each floor number. So it has like chapter eight and it's like floor one of the dungeon, floor two, three, four, five. But for some reason, there are four floor 21s in the guide apparently. <laughs> okay. Nope, here's another one that are all floor 21. I mean, I know there's like loops on this one. Maybe that's what it's doing, but why can't we just count them? Regardless, there's 24 floors in floor seven or chapter seven. And I know there are more in chapter eight. No idea why I did that. Steven says, speaking of misprints, when I saw Roland on Sunday, he told me something new to watch out for. There are wee copies of Twilight Princess with the Triforce printed upside down. Neat. Huh. How did they mess that up? Did it get printed and then immediately fixed so a few of the early ones are? Or maybe it was like a special printing for, I don't know, Target or someone? Interesting. Anyway, I hope Roland's doing well. I'm sad I didn't get to see him. Steven says, I mean, they screwed up Okami super bad, so anything is possible. Yeah. <sighs> Neat. <laughs> I don't think we need to watch out for it. <laughs> <sighs> All right, things that are coming up. I know I said this earlier, but I am streaming at one for painting today on my channel, uh, Mal Makes on Twitch. And then tomorrow at one, Steven is going to be playing Metroid. I don't know which Metroid. Steven, what Metroid are you playing? Super? We're on Super Metroid? Okay. I know we did one too, and I didn't know if we were on to Super or not. So Steven's doing a Super Metroid tomorrow, and there will be breakfast stream on Thursday, and then Friday morning I will be painting again. If I haven't finished the painting, I start Today, I'll probably finish it then because I'm going to be doing a smaller one, an 8x10. And then we'll be doing Zelda on Friday. And next week I'll do more Dark Clouds, probably Monday night again. I think that's all the things. And I'm sure Steven will have the VOD for Dark Cloud up once he gets home. I did remux it, Steven. So that's set for you. And I got breakfast stream set up and switched all by myself. I didn't switch the PS4 back to the Switch though, so you'll have to do that on Friday or tomorrow or whatever. The hardest part was remembering what the password to the computer was. Because um, 
It's not one of my passwords, it's one of his. Did we roll beans yet? We did. We rolled beans earlier because I couldn't reach the thing and Steven, or Chaz rolled beans for me. Now <laughs> what's the password? Tell us. Shh, it's a secret. All right, well, I think I am going to wrap here um, because I need to pill Kepi soon and I need to start getting ready for painting stream. So I hope to see you all at one for painting. <laughs> I'm responsible and can be trusted with passwords. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. I will see everyone at one. I hope you have a good afternoon. <laughs>